before I continue, I want to introduce you to what might be an unfamiliar concept, although if you've taken chemistry, you, you might know a little bit about it. It's called a mole. And this isn't the thing that grows on, on your face with a hair in it, or the animal that digs in your backyard, although those are also called moles. But we're talking about the SI unit called a mole. And a mole is just a number. It's like saying um, you know, a mole of something means a certain number of something, just like a dozen or a, um, well, I don't know what other things are that are, are numbers. But it's like saying you know, a dozen eggs is 12 eggs, right? A dozen equals 12. Well, just like that, a mole, a mole of eggs would be 6, I always forget the exact number, it's 6.023, I think, something of that of that nature. 6 point, you can look it up. I, I think it's 6.023 times 10 to the 20th. Let me look it up, actually, the right, the exact number, just because I think I'm, that, that 23, I'm, I'm mis, uh, misremembering. Let's see, the, the, the mole, I'm on Wikipedia now, and I'm, I just looked up uh, the mole. OK, there you go. On Wikipedia, see it's very useful. Oh yeah, I was I was close. It's 6.022, 6.022 times 10 to 23 of something. So it's a very, it's a very large number of something. So normally we don't deal in moles of eggs. I don't think there have been a mole of eggs ever produced in the history of universe. 10 to the 23 is a very, very, very large number. So where is it useful? Well, a mole is useful for counting atoms. Uh, and and so what what is a mole of atoms? Well, it's that it's that or molecules. What's that many molecules? It's six followed by roughly twenty three zeros of molecules. Very very big number. But what's interesting about a mole is that when I have a mole of something, its mass. So let's say it's it's mass in grams. So let's say a mole mole of carbon. Its mass in grams is going to be equal to so mass in so mole of carbon if i have a mole so if i have this many carbon molecules its mass in grams it'll have x grams it'll it'll have a mass of x grams where x is the atomic mass number atomic mass of of a atom of carbon. Although if I was saying about a mole of a mo molecule, I would figure out the atomic mass of the entire molecule. So what's an atomic mass number? Let me see if I can if I can do a web search on a on a periodic table. See, I'm I'm showing you what I do here. I don't it's not fancy. So let me do let me go to Google. google.com and let's look up periodic table. Let's see if we can find a good one. Periodic table. This one looks good. Let's see what I can do. It's some time to up. Oh no! Looks like everything is freezing up too. Oh, there you go. So periodic table of elements. Good. Let's see what we can do. So if we go to carbon, which is right here, we see that its its atomic number is six, and that's the number of protons it has. But let's see if I can zoom in on carbon. What happens? The periodic table. Oh, there you go. That's pretty neat. So the atomic mass number, it's the mass of the entire atom. And just so you know, I mean, we're kind of delving into a little bit of chemistry here. But most of the mass of an atom is the protons and the neutrons. And the neutrons and the protons weigh roughly the same thing. And then the electrons are much, much, much smaller. So if you, if you pretty much factor in the mass of the protons and the neutrons, you pretty much have the mass of the particle. And then just another, a little more chemistry here is that um, although on average most of, the, most of the atoms have roughly the same number of protons and neutrons, some don't. Some, you know, you could have a carbon atom that has you know, seven neutrons. You could have another one that has five, another one with six. So, and, th and those are actually all called isotopes, and I won't go into all of that. But they're just the same atom with different numbers of neutrons. But in general, the atomic mass number, just if you had a kind of a, a broad rule of thumb, is is equal to um, uh, sorry, the atomic mass is equal to the mass of the protons and the neutrons, and they tend to be equal. So, if the atomic number is six, the mass tend the atomic mass tends to be twelve. So, why is this useful? So we can say if we have, I don't know, what is this, gallium. 
if I have a mole of gallium, right? Let me actually let me you can or let's say niobium. Let's say I have a mole of niobium. If we look here on this uh, on the periodic table, it has an atomic mass number of 41. And then its average atomic mass, if we were to average all of the isotopes or kind of how, how you know, based on their weighting of how they exist in nature, it's 92.9, so roughly 93. So it's actually a little bit more than double its atomic number. But let's say it's 92 point, let's, let's say 93. So if we had a mole of niobium, if we had 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of niobium, we, it would weigh, it would not weigh, it would have a mass of 92 grams. So that's pretty easy. You look at any element, molybdenum, the ma you know, we see here, oh whoops. Well, let's say chromium. We see its atomic mass number is roughly fi its atomic mass is roughly 52. We see that there. So, if I have a mole of it, if I have 6 times 10 uh roughly 6 times 10 to the 23 of it, that much will have a mass of 52 grams. So that's how we think about a mole. So if I tell you I have a mole of something, I'm also telling you how many of that a molecule I have. On the, and I'm also telling you how, what the mass of that mole, of that, mole that quantity will be, um, if, assuming that you have a periodic table in front of you. So with that said, with that out of the way, let's, do some, let's make some more progress with our thermodynamics. Invert colors. So we said in the last several videos, let me see when I'm running out of time. I have plenty of time. That pressure times volume, pressure times volume is somehow proportional. It's somehow proportional, I, you know, let's call that K. And this is an arbitrary number. It's not some special constant. To the total kinetic energy, kinetic energy total of a, of a system, total. And we also said that that is equal, that that is um, Roughly proportional, you know, that's some constant. That's another constant. Times the number of ob the number of of um, molecules we have times the temperature, because temperature we viewed as kinetic energy per molecule, right? So in general, we could also say that, you know, this is proportional to this, which is proportional to this. That pressure times volume is equal to is proportional, and we'll use R, because you'll see where that's that's coming from in a second. It's it's proportional. It's equal to some constant times the number of molecules, n. And when I write small n here, see here I was just saying the absolute number. So if I had five molecules, I'd put a five here. But now this n, I'm counting in moles. Right. So if I say I have, if this n is one, that means I have six times six point oh two two times ten to the twenty three molecules. So let me see one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23, right? So I'm just saying, so this is just another way to write the number of molecules, and then that's times temperature. And then if we rearrange it, PV equals NRT, we have a relationship that if I know the pressure and the volume and the number of molecules, I can figure out the temperature. Or if I know the number of molecules, the temperature, and the pressure, I can figure out the volume, assuming Assuming I know what R is, and I'm about to tell you what that is. R is called the universal gas constant, and it is, R is 8.31 joules, joules per, joules per mole Kelvin. And that kind of tells you what you need in this, in this, um, in, in this formula. This should end up being joules. Right, so if you have this, if you have pressure in pascals and you have volume in meters cubed, you'll end up with joules there. This should be in moles, moles. This is 8.31 joules per mole kelvin, and then this, as we always said, should be in kelvin. And honestly, if you if you just memorize two things in all of thermodynamics, you'll probably be able to do 95% of problems. But you actually should have the intuition of how they work. But just remember that P over P V over T is equal to a constant, or that if you change them, they relate to each other. That you know, they all equal a constant. So if P1 times V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 times V2 divided by T2, and then you and then you also should just need to memorize PV is equal to nRT, where R is equal to 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. 
And I know you might not have a lot of intuition of this formula yet, because I haven't used it, but I'm going to do that in the next video. But these are, these are literally the two most important things you should know in thermodynamics, and hopefully you have a little intuition at this point of what they mean. See you soon.